the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, the cornerstone of the ever-changing South End for nearly 150 years. Now the Mother Church of the Archdiocese of Boston is undergoing its own change, a much-needed, long-awaited restoration. You wonder how they really built it, don't you? Father Kevin O'Leary was ordained here 25 years ago. The famous story that was uh, reported in the paper that we all prostrated ourselves on the floor to, for our promises and I got up and the carpet smelled so badly and it ruined the vestments that I said, I'm never coming back to this place again. But he did as the rector. We'd be having mass, we'd look out and we'd say, oh my gosh, this is wrong, this is falling in, that's falling out, watch out for this. And you'd say to yourself, what could it take to get it done? And I thought, I don't think we could ever, ever do this whole cathedral. Today, what once seemed impossible is close to fruition. We only have one cathedral and it's larger than Notre Dame in Paris and larger than St. Patrick's in New York. We've restored every single thing that we could possibly be maintain or keep. Areas once worn and dark are now bathed in light. The altar, the floor. At night, the stained glass windows will be illuminated. Breathing new life into this sacred structure is a once-in-a-lifetime project, says Suffolk Construction CEO John Fish. When I received the phone call from the Cardinal to ask us to get involved, I was absolutely thrilled. This building was put together in 1875 with the hands of immigrants using pudding stone from this particular area. And here we are almost 150 years later, bringing it back to its original luster. And to have that opportunity, especially as a Catholic, I feel very, very fortunate. This is not Boston's first cathedral, says Cardinal Sean Patrick O'Malley. The first cathedral was built like in 1803, or, but we outgrew it. The immigrants in the past made such sacrifices to build a beautiful church like this. and. And now it's our turn to make sure that this church is cared for, a place that can be a spiritual home. This is very important to the community, and uh, it's very different. I'm very happy to be here. Labor foreman David Boussier is one of 50 tradespeople here daily. He was excited to uncover the original brickwork that supports the altar. I have passion for the work. To see what it looked like to what it is now, it's impressive. They don't want to leave the project. They've had such a fun time with the Cardinal because he's been very much involved. Father Kevin has taken an active role during the life of construction, which has taken about 12 months. 12 months and on schedule, a rebirth for the church and the community. We've received this, now it's our turn to pass it on. The Christian Science Plaza is a place of respite in Boston's Back Bay. The final phase of a campus that grew up around the first Church of Christ scientist built in 1894. The original design of the plaza by I.M. Pei and Araldo Casuda was done in the late 60s as an urban renewal project to revitalize this part of the city, which at the time was economically depressed. It was 14.3 acres, now it's about 13 and a half acres, and about 10 of those acres are the open space. Largest privately owned publicly accessible open space in Boston. Now a Boston landmark, the plaza is in the last stages of a revitalization project. Changes subtle to the eye, but significant to the church, visitors, and environs. John Amadeo, landscape architect with CRJA, and Robert Herlinger, chief architect for the church. We had underutilized real estate, so we began to move our workplace from one building to the next. They sold property, including the site of Boston's newest skyscraper, One Dalton, to fund and pave the way for change. The church was very interested in making it welcoming to all and at all times of day and at all times of year. The design, as it was done in the 60s and 70s, had these very gentle barriers at its edges, saying, we want you to come in, but we're not going to make it easy. A style known as brutalist, dominated by concrete. No more concrete. We felt the wood would be a more welcoming material. So the bench says welcome in English and 12 other languages. This one is in Korean. These are the languages that our publications are translated into, and so it's a way in which we also are making sure that all of the members of the community are welcomed. The most asked question? What are you doing with the reflecting pool? The reflecting pool will be as you've always known it, but better. 
Instead of it being concrete, we decided to make it granite pavers that would make the pool appear to still be full even when it was empty. And with a ripple effect. The idea of taking the original mother church and dropping it in water and having that ripple idea go out to the world. This part is now finished. There are still a few tweaks to be made. And it's been tested as far as the infinity edge, so the water will go over the edge and still be the infinity edge pool that it was. The only thing missing... People. I would love to see the plaza filled with people. People walking through, people resting, people coming to the plaza as a destination. It's really our welcome mat. If you just enjoy the place, that's good for the soul.